All right, I thought I would show how I have built in some CSS animation classes into my Generate Press child theme. So I know you've seen these fancy, uh, not transitions, but uh, you know it, it, it's, it's typical with uh, page builder sites. So you, you have the page that loads or, or with purchase themes like in ThemeForest, things like that. The page loads and elements in the page fade in. Uh, they may fade in from the top or bottom, uh, slowly move across the screen, things like that. Uh, and as you scroll down, you know, things just aren't there. They fade in as you scroll down. So it, it was two, three, four sites ago, I guess. I thought I would try to build in kind of a little simple library of CSS animation classes that I could reuse on sites just for adding these little subtle details because they are cool and CS animation uh, makes it pretty easy. So I have a little testing site that I've set up here and I've got this very simple straightforward page um, just with some movies, uh, some of my favorite movies. Um, I'm a child of the 80s so I love 80s movies. Um, but you know, it's just kind of uh, sitting there. You know, some animation might help dress it up a little bit if these elements fade in. Um, so, first of all, just to show you, I'm using uh, my I call it the Generate Press Developer Child theme, just because it's it's got a lot of code and stuff in it. Not that I'm a professional coder by any means, but it's uh, snippets and things that I've picked up from different places and customized, or even built myself in some cases that I use on all my sites. So I use this with Generate Press and the Generate Press Premium add-ons, plugins, plug-in, whatever. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's available on GitHub and we're going to jump over to look at the back end of this. So I'm using Generate Blocks, love Generate Blocks. And I have a couple of containers set up with my title in it. Now, this is not meant to win any design awards or anything. This is very straightforward and out of the box. Um, I do want to add a little more padding under here. Yeah, let's try 140, 150. Or actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and make this fill the screen. I'm going to drop that back. And I always like a little more padding on the bottom. It just, I like to pull my elements out of the bottom of the page. It's just something that kind of bugs me. I'll update that. We'll take one more look and then we'll jump over to the theme files. Yeah, that's, that's a little better. Yeah, cool. Okay. So now I'm going to jump over to, okay. Now I'm in VS Code. These are my, uh, theme files, and we're really only going to only going to be dealing with, or really not going to have to code anything, but we're going to use classes that are uh, that are placed in the styles or style.css. Sorry. So I have this animation section, and I have this. So I'm using a trick that I found on CSS tricks that uh, where you make sure that JavaScript is load before it actually kicks in any animation stuff um, because some of it is relying on JavaScript. So yeah, first, so we'll look at this. So we have this has.js. So has.js is a class that's always loaded as soon as JavaScript loads. And here it is right here. So here's this little snippet. So it adds has.js to the HTML element when JavaScript is loaded. So I can you know, use this class to style elements that are only affected when JavaScript is loaded. So I'm saying no animations until uh, we get rid of this um, preload thing, which is another, yeah. So there, it's getting rid of, uh, so preload is built in, but I'm saying when this is, when this is done, remove it and add loaded. So again, this is all built into my theme. I, oh, I'm sorry, this is uh, JavaScript actually, but it's still built into my theme. Um, and then we have this prep animation stuff and do animation stuff. So I won't get into all the details of how it's set up 
please download the theme file, dig into it, and tinker with it if you like. Um, if you want me to go into it into detail, um, you know, let me know in a comment. I'll make another video. But I really just wanted to hit the, the high points and show you how you can use it and how you can add to it if you want to. Uh, so the animations are really built <laughs> through an Animista. Animista. Um, so I, I really just swipe these and I kind of customize them. You can use Animista to uh, build animations of different types and then it'll give you the code for it and you can tweak it to your to your liking. So I get these classes and it, it gives you these animation keyframes and again you can tweak these as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I have some uh, fade in left, fade in, fade in bottom, fade in right. I don't have fade in top, I need to add that. But again, just really simple. I didn't want to make it overly complicated. Things that I use a good bit um, if I were going to do something more complicated, it would probably be on a custom basis per site. I'm not going to build it into the child theme. And then we also have, you know, and, and this goes down, it's just more keyframes with the fade in right, fade in right. Um, yeah, the WebKit portion of the keyframes. And then we have some delay classes. So the, the, here, here's how you get the nice little, you know, the headline fades in first, and then the body text fades in next, and then the image fades in next. And I've only built them out up to 1,500 milliseconds, but I mean, I could certainly add more. Um, and then we have this script that is doing two things. So it's prepping the page for the animation. And then we have something, again, that I stole off of. Um, actually, I got this off of CSS Tricks, I think, but I may, maybe he was referencing a Stack Overflow. So this allows you to do a special class <clears throat> that will trigger an animation when it's when an element scrolls into view. Uh, you do have to be careful with this because it won't trigger unless the element is completely within the viewport. So that is to be noted. Uh, so if you have a full screen uh, image or some kind, maybe your form or something that you know takes up two or three screens of scrolling, you don't want to apply this class to it because it's never going to show up because it can't appear in the screen all at once. So anyway, let's go over here and see how we use them. All right. So I'm going to jump back over to this. And let's go ahead and start applying some classes. So I'm going to select this as the generate blocks uh, headline element. I'm going to go to advanced and classes. And I'm just going to do a fade in. So we're going to say fade in and prep animation. Okay, that's it. Okay, we saved it. Now let's see what happens. Did you see that? We got a nice little, I hope you can see that. Fade in, what do I have, bottom? I can't remember. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't have a fade in top. There you go. So it moves up from the bottom as it fades in. Let me refresh that one more time. There you go. So easy, right? You just add a class. Okay, so now what if we want these to fade in as the page scrolls in? So as you scroll into view here, I want these three columns to fade in. And you could get more complicated with it and have the picture scroll uh, fade in first and then the title and then this bit of text and then this one and then this one. You would need lots of delay classes, which again, you can do. But I'm just going to have these columns. Uh, I'm going to have them fade in like this one. They're going to fade in from the bottom. <clears throat> so I'm going to select this first container. And again, go to Advanced and Classes. And I'm going to say Scroll Fade In Bottom. Prep Scroll Animation. And I have a sneaking suspicion that I've forgotten. Let's see, here are these. Yeah, scroll fade in left, scroll fade in, scroll fade in bottom, scroll fade in. Is that what I said? Scroll fade in bottom, prep scroll animation. Okay. So then we'll go to the next one. We're going to say the same thing. Scroll fade in bottom. Now we're going to add a delay of 250 milliseconds 
and again prep scroll animation and now for the last one and all I'm doing here is in case you're wondering it's much easier to select blocks inner blocks uh, using this block navigation feature than if I were to try to click and get into the column where well, I did it so there you can kind of find where that edge is but this makes it uh, easier okay so one more time and I could be copying and pasting this Copy and paste. And now I'm going to change 250 to 500. It's in multiples of 250. And these are milliseconds. Okay, so let's update. And because, uh, so you'll notice this simply has a class of fade in, fade in bottom. These have a class, can I select it? of scroll fade in so that's a special class to say fade this in wait and fade this in when this element is within the viewport okay so i'm doing one more time i think i did okay so now i'm going to refresh we've got that nice little animation and i'm going to scroll down and poof we get that nice little fade in and i can change it so let's tweak this you know, maybe I want this to wait half a second, which is 500 milliseconds, and change this one to 1,000. They make it a little slower. And you can't even apply a delay to that one. Let's, let's see how this looks. Okay. Scroll back to the top and refresh. Okay. Cool. Okay, nice. And it takes, you know, my whole home design that's not so great, and it makes it a little better. It, you get this nice fade in effect. Uh, one more time. Cool. Nice. Yeah. So that's it. So those are built in to. Um, the, the child theme, I'm sorry. They're built into the child theme. They're there ready to use. <clears throat> um, and a good rule of thumb is you have these classes that you can use, fade in left, fade in, fade in bottom, fade in right. And if you want it to occur when an object or an, when an element, element scrolls into view, simply prepend it with scroll, fade in left, scroll, fade in bottom, scroll, fade in right. And you always uh, need to have this, uh, if it's a simple fade in, you know, when the element's in view, uh, also use prep animation. And if you're scrolling into view, you prep scroll animation. And this do animation is applied with the JavaScript. And that has to do with this scrolling into view part. And there's one more thing that I can show you under, see in the ink files, there's a helper, helper functions. And the only thing I have in it right now is this little filter that I built to add those delay classes. Let's see, I'm up to 2,000. I don't even know if I have 2,000. I do not. Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> so what you can do is use this uh, filter uh, in your custom templates. Say like you're looping through a list of items uh, with a custom post type, an advanced custom field, something like that, which I do a good bit. Uh, you can use this filter to loop through and generate these classes uh, so that you can do these animations on the fly. And I have another site over here that I can show you a little piece of what how that works. So here's uh, it was a forklift site, and I built a custom template and I'll show this in another uh, another video. This is going to be much more involved. But anyway, there's this little loop right here, this, this if loop that is showing features. We have these icons that are spit out. And I wanted them to fade in one at a time as they loaded on the page. So if you see right here, I have this delay dash and then this PHP bit, echo apply filters. And this GPC 
anim delay times, and then a count. So the count is right here. So I do have to generate that variable myself and loop through it. So that's going to change each time. So you can see right here, I've set it to two to begin with. And then each time it loops through, it adds one to that. So it goes through once as two, and it loops through again, and it's three and four and so on and so forth. And it may generate classes that I don't have yet, but you know, that's okay, no big deal. Um, you know, you can build that out yourself for your custom site <clears throat> as needed. So yeah, um, I'll, I'll try to work this out in a video sometime in the future, but it's got all the same stuff, fade in, uh, the delay time that's generated with this filter, and then you'll see the prep animation here as well. So it's the same stuff that I'm adding in generate blocks. It's just in my custom template. So that is all I have. Um, give me feedback. Leave me some comments if uh, this is helpful. If there's anything, maybe you have some ideas how to make it better. Um, subscribe, please. I'm going to add more videos on a somewhat regular basis as I can. I do work as well, so I, I do this as I'm able, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Um, I think it's helping some people, and uh, I enjoy sharing what I know and learning what I don't. So have fun with this, and uh, see you guys in the next one.